Good afternoon again, everybody. I want to just begin by saying thank you so much to Director Butler and the Department of Family Services for hosting such an amazing conference today. Can we give her and her team a round of applause? And I also want to thank Teresa Grant, who is here as well from Aging Services. Thank you so much, Teresa, for all that they both do. You know, anything you do in love turns out right. And what I am most proud of with both Director Butler, uh, Teresa Grant, and everyone who has had any hand in preparing today's uh, event is that it has been done in love. Uh, they represent us so especially well, but it is their love that distinguishes them. And so I am just really grateful to them and want to say thank you so much uh, for all that you do. I also want to say how delighted I am. You all know this is my favorite room um, that I love so much to have the opportunity um, not only to come by and to greet you, but just to thank you. All of the caregivers who are gathered here today, all of the elders of our community, this is a special room to me. And I just am so delighted to have the chance to be here uh, with each of you today. This room, I think, says it all. It is the need, the great need that we have to support each other as we care for those who have cared for us uh, many of them for most for all of our lives and what an honor it is uh, not only to have you here But I am really just honored that you have taken time out to come here today to get the information so that we can do the best We can to care for those who need us and so really uh, just to say thank you uh, For being here and I know that what you do is personal. I know that it is personal uh, I know this firsthand and let me just back up one second and say one thing also. Uh, Director Butler said this, but I hope that you all are enjoying your lunch, the iced tea, the salad. You know, I was up all night cutting these strawberries up and, uh, and making sure that everything was placed just right. You know, it took me a while to get that bread to rise like that, but uh, we got it to, done. And, and so hopefully everything is to your liking. And when the lunch comes out, go easy on me. I didn't have as much time as I thought, but I always like to make sure that your lunch is prepared for you. So I hope that you all are enjoying it. Um, but again, I know that this is personal to you and it is so personal for all of us. There is no time where I stand before you that I don't remember who sent me here. Uh, you've heard that I'm the eighth county executive of Prince George's County, but I am well aware that there are a long line of individuals who helped me to get here. Uh, many of them are present in this room and some are not present. Uh, you often hear me talk about my grandmother, Leela Bright, who I love just to pieces. I love Leela Bright, and uh, I'm not her only grandchild, but I swear I'm her favorite. I'm going to say that from now on, but she just made us feel that way, that we were her favorite, uh, my grandmother, Maybell James. And the reason that I mentioned that Maybell James was born in 1897. Uh, she and my grandmother are from Seneca, South Carolina. And the reason that I mentioned them is that the, that the whole tradition and it is a tradition of caring for our elders, uh, is passed down. Uh, I can remember when uh, Maybell, who brought my family here, actually in 1956, I've told this story to many of you often, uh, when they literally fled South Carolina when my great-grandfather was murdered by a sheriff's deputy, uh, they did so virtually overnight. Uh, when my family was told, you know what, if you don't leave, we'll kill the whole family. Well, Maybell James brought our family to Fairmont Heights, Maryland. That's how we came to Prince George's County. And um, Maybell, I have to tell you, she brought my mother, my grandmother, and many other family members who still live in Fairmont Heights to this day. And, uh, and Maybell was a bad lady. She was a super bad lady. Uh, who often said to me when anybody complained about anything in our family, she said, you know, you don't have the right to complain. And she was a Southern lady, so she would say very simply, if you don't like it, you go further and you do better. And that's exactly what we must do in all of the things that concern us is continue to do the best we can. And so it was an honor after all that she did for us, for my grandmother, Leela Bright, when my grandmother, Maybell, aged and she lived to 97, um, I watched my grandmother care for her, and she cared for her with everything she had. Every need she had, my grandmother was there to care for her, and we were all blessed to be there when she transitioned, but it taught me a lot in watching the caring that took place, which is why when my grandmother, who passed three years ago, she lived with my parents for 16 years, 
And when Leela Bright, who had cared for my grandmother, needed care, guess who stepped in to care for her? Well, it was my mother and my father and the rest of us. Now, Leela was a person, and I know so many of us in this room are really well familiar with this, had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Um, and so we're really all familiar with what that means as a caregiver, how difficult and challenging it can be to care for our loved ones who suffer from Alzheimer's and, and dementia. 14,000 of us in all total in Prince George's County uh, are suffering from dementia. And what that means is we have 293,000 caregivers uh, in the state of Maryland who are caring for loved ones who, who suffer from dementia and Alzheimer's. And we know that that can both be challenging. It can also be a time that is, uh, is very precious to us. You know, I remember in spite of the, the challenges that it presented, there are times also that we could smile. Uh, with my grandmother, I remember once she, um, she was hospitalized. And uh, I, didn't, I was not familiar with the, the concept of sundowning. Some of you in the room will know about that. Well, after her first night in the hospital, I called in to see how her night had gone. And, uh, and the nurse on the phone said, well, it wasn't such a great night. You know, she was a little frightened. And, uh, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to be up there soon, but let me speak to her. My grandmother grabbed the phone and said, listen, uh, Angie, I need you to get down here. I'm on 7th and T Street. And she said some things were not going just right. And she said, and you know what? And furthermore, I told these people that they better be careful because when you get down here, you're going to have the whole place surrounded. She said, y'all don't mess with me. My granddaughter is coming here and somebody is going to be in a lot of trouble because I don't know what's going on and why I'm being held here in this way. And I had to explain it. You're not being held. You're actually in the hospital and it is okay. And I am going to be there and to check on you. Um, but we do have those moments, tender moments. Uh, in spite of our challenges, where we get to also smile uh, with our loved ones, but 293,000 caregivers. Uh, this is this is how the and, and these numbers are growing. Uh, so it is so important uh, for all of us that we recognize uh, the need to ask for help. And now there are many, and I talked to some today, who are experiencing now this whole new phenomena, which is the sandwich phenomena. Uh, which means that you are not only caring for your parents, but you are simultaneously caring for your children. And this is a new phenomena uh, that we're seeing because people are living longer lives. Uh, and it means that there is an increased need for us to bind together as a community and to, begin to continue to support each other. That's why this Caregivers Conference and all of the resources that are here today are so critically important. I want to thank all of the vendors who are here today, uh, who are, are here to, um, to provide information and resources to you, uh, to make sure that you know that your county government every day of the week is thinking about you, thinking about your needs, thinking about what we can do to make sure that those, again, who have served us uh, are served in their later years. And so I hope that you will take advantage of all of the resources are they, that are there but that you know that we are continuing uh, and evolving in terms of the care we give. Mental health care is critically important, especially for those who are offering care, that you should take the time to take care of yourself. It is difficult to provide care unless you have cared for yourself as well. And so we want you to know that those resources are here. I know that the health department provides um, many of those um, services. I hear that you heard from Dr. Askew today, uh, who is a fireball, who is making sure that this issue is one that we have kept a laser focus on. The Department of Family Services uh, works very closely to provide that care uh, through many programs, including our Step Forward program uh, that seeks to reduce the stigma around mental health. Uh, and so we want you to know that that is there and to continue to reach out for it. Uh, and again, you know, there is a, a saying, many of us remember this beautiful lady, Lena Horne, beautiful Lena Horne, uh, who was a singer and who said something that was so powerful. She said, it's not the load that breaks you down, it's the way you carry it. And you know, her words couldn't be any more true. And so you see, as a community, there is no reason, in spite of the difficulty, that you should carry this on your own. That's what today is about. It is not only about the services that are here, but it's that we have each other, that we are together today. That is what this statement is, is that we, you look around the room and you are not alone. 
and whatever the care or concern is, you are not alone. You have not only the government who loves and cares for you, but your neighbors who you can lean on. So I hope that you have also taken the time to exchange information with some of the people who will be seated at your table, who you may encounter, uh, who can be there for you to lean on. So I know you have an exceptional uh, guest speaker here today. Uh, and I know that we are all excited to hear uh, from the keynote speaker, Dr. Yvonne Bronner of Morgan State University, a bad and powerful woman who's going to speak to you in just a moment. Um, but I did want to stop by to tell you that I love you. I wanted to also thank you for the grand honor, and it is a grand honor to represent you as your county executive. How many of you know that there is no place like Prince George's County? And I say that. And you notice that when I say it, I'm going to let my head spin a little bit because in my humble opinion, Prince George's County is the crown jewel of Maryland. I challenge you to go any place and find a community quite like ours. And so I thank you for the honor of representing you. It is my prayer that God will continue to bless you every day, uh, that he will continue to bless our county. And I thank you so much again for being here.